Hey folks, Bridges here. Um, in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to um, use the Tinkercad circuits simulator to have your micro bit control a mechanical output. In this case, we're going to use a, um, a servo motor. Okay. So in order to, to do this, first thing that we need is your micro bit. And I'm going to use the micro bit breadboard uh, breakout board combination. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go to my search window. And I'm going to type in micro bit. And there, there are some suggestions. And I'm going to choose micro bit. Now, if, if you look in your, your toolbox, you've got the regular micro bit. You've got the, oop, I don't actually don't want that. So I'll hit escape. There's the micro bit with breakout, which we used before. But if you keep scrolling down, there are starter packs as well that use the micro bit. Okay, sort of pre built circuits for us. And there's an alarm and an analog and a compass and some gestures and a light sensor and, and some other things there. The one I'm looking for is the very, now there is one called servo. We're going to skip that one because um, I want you guys to see how to make it rather than just use a pre made one. So we're going to use the last one called micro bit breakout. Okay, so when you click that and bring it out, it takes it a second to catch up. It might take it a second on your computer, but we're going to place that on our workspace right there. Now, what you might notice with this is it actually gives us the, the micro bit and the breakout board, and it gives us our breadboard, and it gives us a um, the power supply. So this is like a constant voltage. And what it is is you can dial this power supply into whatever voltage you want it to be. Just like you can add more batteries um, to make your to make your battery have more voltage. This is basically like an everlasting battery. Okay, it never goes dead. So, um, and then it also has the wires that connect that battery, okay, that power supply um, to the net, to the ground rail, and to the positive rail of the breadboard. And um, and the, and what's more, the micro bit is already connected to ground as well. So, and the micro bit gets its power from the USB when we start the simulation. By the way, in case you were wondering where the micro bit gets power from. Okay. So with our setup here, um, I'm going to close my search window. The next thing I'm going to look for is called the, it's called a micro servo. And a servo motor is just a motor with some gears to make it go at a reasonably slow speed, slow speed. So it's, we don't even need to search for anything. We can just scroll down in your basic drawer and go down and find this one. It's blue. It's next to the yellow one. It's called micro servo. And I'm just going to drag it out. Now it does not actually connect anywhere on the breadboard, okay? So I'm going to, um, I'm just gonna leave it right here. And what we're interested in here is the three, there's three little um, holes here, which you can connect wires to, which will eventually connect to our breadboard and, and micro bit. All right, if you hover on the holes of the servo motor, you can see what they, what they how you hook them up. So the first hole we hover on, it says ground, Okay, that's the hole on the left. The middle hole says power, and the right hole says signal. Now, as you guys know, ground means the negative terminal of the circuit. Power, in this case, refers to the, the, the power supply, so it gets whatever we dial this in for voltage-wise, which will be six volts, by the way. Um, basically, what you need to know is that uh, it takes a lot more energy, it takes a lot more power um, to to make the motor go than it does to light up a light. So we're gonna use six volts to power this. Uh, so this, this will go back to the negative, this pin will go to the six volt power supply, and this final pin is the signal, okay? And what the signal does is it goes to the micro bit, um, the pins, okay? The GPIO pins that we worked with last week. Alrighty. So if you can remember, if you remember back, you don't have to do this part, by the way. I'm just going to quickly refresh your memory. Last week, we used a resistor that was connected to pin zero, and then also a, an LED, okay, that was connected to the resistor, which found its way back to the ground, okay? That was, that was our little circuit last week. And what we did was, Basically, the um, micro bit acted as the power supply. Okay, when it was plugged in, the micro bit received instructions from us when to send power to pin zero and turn it on high, which means turn it on, 
and then when to cut off the power to pin zero and turn it to low. Right? If you remember that, basically what happened was when, it, when we turned zero on high, it let the energy flow through the LED and turned it on. And when we turned uh, pin zero to low, it cut that power off and therefore the LED was no longer shining. We're still gonna do that, okay? But instead of, in this case, instead of lighting up an LED by turning on pin zero, in this case, we're going to send that signal from pin zero all the way up and around, and it's going to go to the signal, the signal pin on the servo motor. Okay. So in this case, the pin zero controls the servo motor's signal pin. Okay. Now, what about these other two pins on the servo motor? Well, like I said, um, they require more than the three volts, which the micro bit puts out, which is why we are going to get the power for the, for the servo motor straight from the positive rail of the, of the breadboard. So we're going to take that power from, from the positive rail straight from the power supply. I'm going to use a red wire because that is telling us that it's the positive terminal. And as you have guessed, probably by now, the ground connection takes us straight back to the ground connection, which is the, the negative terminal from the power supply. So we're getting power straight from the power supply. Um, something's going on with my micro, but there we go. We're getting power straight from the power supply straight into the servo motor. And the signal wire is the one that's connected to the micro bit, which tells it when to go and how far to go. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so this is the way that your servo should be set up. Now all we have to do is code it. We have to code the micro bit to tell it when to turn on that pin zero. And um, basically how to how to make the motor move so we're going to get rid of on start we're going to use the forever loop okay and what we're looking for here is a is a very basic if then else statement which is under control so in the control drawer i'm getting the last one if then else okay now it's looking for what input here well, I'm just going to be simple and use the onboard inputs. So if button A is pressed and I find that puzzle piece, the green hexagon in the input drawer, scrolling down towards the bottom, and there's, there's the puzzle piece we're looking for. If button A is pressed, then what do we want to happen? Well, we want to turn on pin zero to turn on the servo, right? So that is an output. And we're going to go down, scroll down in the output drawer until you find, now if we were lighting an LED, we were using digital right pin zero to high, okay? In this case, we are, there's, a, there's a special piece of code just for, um, just for servo motors, and we're gonna use that one, which is, I think it's um, two, two underneath of the digital right pin zero. So, so it's the 12th one down here, 11, 12. Rotate servo on pin zero to zero degrees, okay? Now, it's already at zero degrees, and as you guys know, a full circle is 360 degrees. So if I wanted my arm to go from up to sideways, that would be a 90 degree turn, wouldn't it? I'm just gonna turn this zero to 90, okay? Now, let's double check. Are we still getting our signal from pin zero, or do we need to choose a different pin? Well, let's check our circuit. Okay, our signal wire is connected to, oh, it's pin zero. So this is, we want it to be pin zero, that's great. So if button A is pressed, this should rotate the servo to 90 degrees, okay? When we let go, else, so if, but if A is not pressed, this is otherwise, so when it's not pressed, we want the servo to return back to zero. So I will grab another one of these um, rotate servo pin statements. And right now it's already at zero, so we're good. So this code says, while holding button A, keep the servo motor down sideways. When released button A, it moves back up. Let's test it and make sure that it works. So um, I'll start my simulation. I'll get rid of my code window. Right now, oh, 
you know what? Stop, stop your simulation. I never did turn on my power supply. I need to click on the power supply and turn it on by giving it six volts. So I click on that power supply and then I change the voltage over here to six. That is important. Now I can start my simulation. As you can see, nothing is happening because nothing is pushed. However, when I push and hold button A, we're watching the servo motor now. While I push button A, what happens? Hey, ta-da, I'm still holding A. It's, the gate is still down. When I release A, it goes back to the home position. Very good. You just used a microcontroller to control a mechanical output. Give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. Now go take this and apply it to project, um, the unit three project. Don't forget, we just used one input and one output. I want you to make it two inputs and two outputs to apply that to your problem scenario and uh, you should be all good. Okay guys, have a good day. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you have questions, you can send me an email or you can join me for office hours on Friday from two to three. Have a good day.